Yo, how is it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Lionhearts and this past weekend we had our first major pro tournament played on CS2 and that was IEM Sydney and with it we had to see a lot of awesome plays, awesome moments, things were mostly functional thankfully and above all else we got to see what it looks like in terms of a developing meta in CS2 from the pro perspective for the first time and there was a lot of interesting stuff to dive into and today we're we'll taking a look at one hyper specific aspect of that and that's the sudden reemergence of the AUG and the SG553 within the current economic meta. So if that interests you at all, make sure you guys take a second, leave a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel to help me out within the YouTube algorithm and make sure you check me out on Twitch, Twitter and TikTok in the description down below. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now, when I say that the AUG and the SG might be back in the meta, I know that, that strikes fear in the hearts of those veterans who remember the horrific COD meta of 2019 that terrorized matchmaking and almost ruined pro Counter-Strike forever and, you know, may have helped us draw with a major they probably shouldn't have, but, you know, hey, you know they, they, that's neither here nor there. We'll leave that one to the historians. But, this is not a full-blown COD meta 2.0. The AUG and the SG aren't going to be replacing the M4 or the AK anytime soon. But in CS2, we're playing in an MR12 format. The economy is much more restrictive, and we've seen the stats relay that beautifully. If we look at the weapon stat usage from IEM Sydney, you will see something very interesting. Opping is down compared to where it used to be in comparative pro tournaments. If we go back to IEM Cologne, the last major tournament on CSGO, you'll see that ops represent around 12.5% of total kills. Go to Sydney, that's down to 7.5%. Now the op wasn't nerfed from CS2 to CSGO, the big difference is the MR12 format and the way the economy is working out. There's less rounds, there's less money, which means there's less opportunity to use the op. But here's the thing, the op playstyle is very important to the pro meta, you need to find a way to fill that gap. So we saw a lot of players start to reach for the AUG and the SG as a budget version of the op. So then that's better than the scout, more versatile, but obviously not nearly as powerful as the op and not nearly as expensive. This was seen much more on the CT side of things, and the AUG actually jumped up to quite a respectful usage stat of 2.92% of kills. That's opposed to IM Clone, where it basically represented zero, showing no statistical amount of kills that were significant. And that's quite a bit of a difference. Obviously, moving into CS2, we're just seeing it more and more, and I think it's something that we should be incorporating into our matchmaking games. Because when you look at the power of the AUG and the SG, I do think that they are flying under the radar right now. These weapons offer an immense amount of versatility and strength for only a little bit more money than what you would put into the AK or the M4. And really, the argument for using these weapons boils down to just ease of use. They're designed to be easier and more lethal versions of the AK and the M4, that's why they cost more. So when you pick up the AUG, you're gonna get a weapon that's easier to spray than the M4s, but is also more accurate at long ranges than the M4s, both scoped and unscoped. And also, this is something that people kinda don't realize, the AUG is the only CT rifle that can one-shot headshot, and it can do it from close to very close medium range. That gives you a distinct advantage over the other CT rifles because you're now on par with the AK and the Krieg in terms of lethality when people get up in your face. And obviously the biggest selling point of the AUG and the Krieg is the access to the scopes. Now please do keep one thing in mind, don't be addicted to using your scopes. These weapons are still just fine when firing from the hip, and you really want to treat the scope like you're turning the weapon into an op, it's fulfilling that role. You want to be holding an angle when you're using the scope, you don't want to just like scope and peek a corner, you want to already have an angle held and let people walk into your crosshair. That's when those scopes are at their most lethal. Please, 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 if you do use these weapons, do not over rely on the scope. It's the number one mistake I see with this weapon. It makes you an easy target because you strafe much slower. Use it wisely and sparingly. That's the best way to use these weapons. All right, well, the back half of this video, let's address the elephant in the room here. And that's that the AUG is being used much more than the SG553. And that's not because the AUG is just straight better than what the Krieg offers. No, they're both very comparable weapons and pretty equal in strength. If anything, the Krieg should be more viable because it's so much cheaper. It's much more realistic for T's to get it up and running compared to what you need to invest to CT to get an AUG plus armor plus nades the full kit. What it boils down to is economy. Already previously in CSGO, it had been a problem for a few years now that the CT economy is significantly worse than the T side economy. 
The T's really don't have to worry about anything. They're able to squeeze in so many more buys and half buys throughout the course of the half because it's so much cheaper to operate and the way the new loss bonus has worked for the last few years. This issue has been magnified at the jump to CS2 because of the MR12 format as we already discussed. So really, just like how late stage capitalism comes for us all, Valve have put now into their game just how unrealistic it is to afford everything you need in your day to day life when you're playing CT. It's great, I can't escape it in real life, now I can't escape it in my video games. Topical joke. But anyway, the reality is in CS2, getting your great full buys as CT when you are losing is really, really hard. Let's take a standard example. Let's just say you lose pistol round, you lose the second round. We're now in the third round. Let's say you bought armor on pistol round and then nothing on the second round. You're coming into the third round and if you've gotten zero kills to that point, which is very likely, you're only going to have 3450 to spend on what should be your first full buy as the CTs. Comparatively, if the Ts get one bomb plant off in those two rounds, they end up with 3750. That's enough for just AK armor straight up, which is a huge weapon advantage over what the CTs could buy in that same time frame. So unless you're getting kills on the pistol round or the round after you lose pistol, you're going to have to make some compromises. You're buying FAMASs, you're buying scouts, or you're not getting any utility if you want an M4 at all, if you can even afford it. And this is why the CTs are at such a huge disadvantage. It's a disaster. You have a lot of times, you're seeing at the pro level now, where pros are having to make the decision, am I going to buy full armor and not get ran over by T's with their econ weapons in the third round? Or am I going to take the chance that a submachine gun could still one-shot me with no armor so I can afford utility? The econ situation is absolutely fucked. So if you're playing on the CT side, if you start off the game losing, you're not buying an op for a long time. The best case scenario for you to be able to afford an op early on the CT side is to hope your team wins pistol, you then full save the second round while your team buys up, you guys win that round, and then in the third round you could force op, armor, and basically no utility or kit. But that's a big risk, and especially when you're dealing with randoms, that's not a risk you're going to take very often. Instead, you're going to want to buy a submachine gun or a FAMAS or a shotgun on round two, and then round three, you might want to carry that weapon over. So the AUG becomes a much more attractive option because you don't need to be as fastidious with your econ management to get something that could be so comparative in strength. And that's what we saw in Sydney. These AUGs came out when the money was a little bit tight, but you needed something to fill that role. And I think it was quite effective at doing so. So I've started to use the AUG a lot more in my own games. I've noticed that when I'm able to afford it instead of the op, it does pretty well. I still like to op when possible, but just the reality is, on the CT side, you're going to be able to afford the op once, maybe twice, unless you are steamrolling the enemy team. And that's just really, really steep for how risk-reward an op can be. Now, while I do think a lot of people are going to be buying a lot of AUGs because it helps to fill the op role when you can't afford it, when we switch over to the T side, I think the Krieg is much more of a preference pick. I don't think it's as necessary to try and fill the op role when you can run five rifles on the T side on a lot of maps and be just as effective as you would if you had that one op slotted in. The reality is, the T side economy is so flexible, everything is so cheap, the difference between buying an AK and a Krieg is just not going to matter that much. You're buying the Krieg because you want to use it. And the Krieg is really strong. It's great if you want to take longer peaks or play a little further back, maybe play a Lurk role. I do think the Krieg has one definitive advantage over the AK, and it has to do with how weird spraying is in CS2. We all know it. Sprays don't work how they should. Something is off. We don't really know what it is, but it doesn't feel like it used to, and it's really frustrating. And I feel that the most with the AK. For whatever reason, maybe it's the rate of fire, maybe it's whatever is weird with spraying in general, but these slower rate of fire weapons like the SG, like the AUG, like the M4A1S, feel like they are easier and more consistent to spray than things like the M4A4 and the AK. So if I'm taking the Krieg, it's sometimes because my AK is just feeling a little weird I need to switch it up. And I think that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with the SG, it's just not going to be like, ooh, this cool, weird niche meta like the AUG is, where the AUG is really going to define, I think, a lot of CT sides going forward. Anyways, that's about it. Let me know in the comments down below, have you guys picked up the AUG or the SG in your games recently? Have you found it useful? Let me know, and I'll respond to whatever I can. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel for more content coming your way. Check me out on Twitch and TikTok. We will be live streaming later tonight after this video goes up, so come check me out then. Other than that, my name is Lionarts. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in another video.